Hello and welcome. My name is Glenn Seafeld. I'm one of the pastors at Nativity Lutheran Church in St. Anthony, Minnesota. Thank you for participating in online worship. Nativity is not offering in-person worship at this time, but we are getting closer. We are currently offering in-person small group gatherings for meetings, baptisms, funerals, and similar events. Groups are limited to 25, with mask wearing and social distancing required. For more information about small group gatherings, please contact me at gcfelt at nativitychurch.org. Nativity staff, council, and medical advisory team have set a target date to resume in-person worship on Memorial Day weekend, May 29th and 30th, beginning with our Saturday evening 5.30 worship. Mask wearing and social distancing will again be enforced. This target date is subject to change should Nativity leadership deem it necessary. We are excited and hopeful about the possibility to again gather together for worship, and we will update you on this possibility in the coming weeks. Nativity aspires to be a community of faith where people feel like they belong, an inclusive community that loves and accepts people as they are, wherever they are in their journey of faith. Let us now worship our God together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Would you please join me and let us pray for our time together. O oh, loving God, we worship you in thankfulness and praise. May this time of worship bless you and grant us faith. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Hi, friends. Happy Mother's Day. Have you wished a mother or a grandmother in your life a happy Mother's Day yet? If you haven't, and they're right there with you, say it right now. Happy Mother's Day. Moms are great, aren't they? When I was a kid, uh, I loved celebrating Mother's Day. But sometimes we aren't uh, the, we can be maybe not super kind to our moms and maybe not do the nicest thing. I remember one time I did something I shouldn't have and my mom asked me for the truth and I told her a lie. And eventually she found out that I told a lie and we dealt with it. But 
in that time when I told the lie, I felt super guilty. It felt like it was, there's this big rock, this boulder just weighing me down. I felt so bad about it. And I thought, if my mom found out, she would never forgive me. But guess what? She did. And she gave me this amazing thing called grace, which is a special kind of forgiveness. And why am I telling you this story? Well, in the beginning of our reading for today, a guy named Paul is remembering all these bad things that he did in his past, that he felt guilty about. But then he talked about how even though he had done all these bad things, God forgave him and gave him grace and then called him to do some really important, awesome work for God. So remember, there is nothing that you can do that will make your mom or a parent stop loving you and giving you forgiveness and grace. And there is also nothing you can do that will make God stop forgiving you and give you grace. Would you all please pray with me? Dear God, thank you for moms. Thank you for grandmas. Thank you for your grace. We love you, God. Amen. Thanks. Bye, friends. A few announcements for today. With the success of our annual meeting on February 14th, leaders were encouraged to hold regular town hall meetings. So that is what we are doing. On May 16th at 10.30 a.m., we will hold a Zoom meeting, and our primary purpose will be to talk about returning to face-to-face -face worship. Watch for more information on our website, weekly e-news, and on our social media channels. If you are new to Nativity Online, we would love to hear from you. Tell us where you are from and how Nativity may assist you in your spiritual growth. Contact us at nativitychurch.org slash contact. Our guest preacher for this weekend is the Reverend Katie Slack. Many of you, uh, many of you may remember Katie from a preaching series on the book of Ruth she did here at Nativity in the summer of 2018. She serves as a pediatric staff chaplain at Children's Minnesota Minneapolis Campus Hospital. And though she covers all units of the hospital, she primarily works with oncology and hematology patients and their families and has been with Children's for over two years. Reverend Slack was raised in rural Iowa, the daughter of two teachers. She attended St. Olaf College and Luther Seminary and was ordained in the ELCA in 2014. She served as a solo pastor at Grace Lutheran Church in Ely, Minnesota for three years before pursuing her call to hospital chaplaincy. Reverend Slack lives in White Bear Lake with her husband, Patrick, and their four sons. She and her family love spending time in nature, snuggling up with good books, and cheering on the Minnesota Twins. Reverend Slack is very grateful for the chance to join the Nativity community once again for worship. Please join me in welcoming back my good friend, Reverend Katie Slack. Hello, I am so grateful to be joining you today here with the community of Nativity Lutheran Church and the broader community worshiping today. Thank you so much for having me. So we are jumping into the book of Galatians today. Galatians is one of Paul's letters. It's his epistle to the churches of Galatia. And so if you remember Paul, Paul was one of these prominent early church leaders, and we have many of his letters in our Bible. And Paul originally was born Saul. He was born a Jewish man, and he became a prominent Jewish religious leader. And he was well known for his passion, and he was well known for his zealousness. And for a time, he zealously persecuted the early Christian church. 
And it was in the midst of his persecution of the church while he was on the road to Damascus, if you recall, that he had this remarkable conversion experience where Jesus appeared to him and he did a 180 where once his passion and zealousness for persecuting the church had stood, he did a 180 and became a leader in the church. And he was called by Jesus, commissioned and sent out to bring the good news of Jesus' message to the Gentile world. And so Paul then went out into the Gentile world and he planted churches. And we suppose, we figure it's likely that he helped plant these house churches, this community of worshipers in Galatia. And then he would go on to other churches. And so he would stay in communication with these church plants in the Gentile world through letters. And so we have Paul's letter today. And his letter to the Galatians picks up where we left off last week in the book of Acts with this early, this early conversation, this early debate within the Christian church. There was this question that came up of who the church was going to be, what their identity was going to be. There was one perspective that because Jesus was the Jewish Messiah, then this new way of being came through Judaism and therefore those who were followers of Jesus ought to live as Jews. And so what that meant for Gentile converts was that they needed to obey the laws of the Torah as they were understood at that time, which included observing the Sabbath and circumcision for males. And so this was of course, something that many of the Gentiles really wrestled with. And so the other perspective that Jewish and Gentile leaders in the church had was that when Jesus came, he, as the Messiah, the Jewish Messiah, he began something new. And because he had begun something new, they no longer needed to observe the laws of the Torah. They no longer needed to find their justification within Torah following. And so Paul, today in his letter to the Galatians, offers his perspective on this argument. He offers it rather boldly. And he begins to dig into why, why this is so important, why this message, why this wrestling, this conversation matters so much. So we prepare for our reading. blessing all through our lives. Laughter, joy, surprise, confessing all through our lives. Love that dreamed a new creation, love that dead an incarnation, love that offers transformation all through The reading for today comes from the book of Galatians, chapter 1, verses 13 to 17, and chapter 2, verses 11 through 21. You have heard, no doubt, of my earlier life in Judaism. I was violently persecuting the church of God and was trying to destroy it. I advanced in Judaism beyond many among my people of the same age, for I was far more zealous for the traditions of my ancestors. But when God, who had set me apart before I was born and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his Son to me so that I might proclaim him among the Gentiles, I did not confer with any human being, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were already apostles before me. But I went away at once into Arabia, and afterwards I returned to Damascus." But when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face, because he stood self-condemned. For until certain people came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But after they came, 
he drew back and kept himself separate for fear of the circumcision faction. And the other Jews joined him in this hypocrisy so that even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not acting consistently with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas before them all, If you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile and not a Jew, how can you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? We ourselves are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. Yet we know that a person is justified not by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. And we have come to believe in Christ Jesus, so that we might be justified by faith in Christ, and not by doing the works of the law, because no one will be justified by the works of the law. But if, in our effort to be justified in Christ, we ourselves have been found to be sinners, is Christ then a servant of sin? Certainly not. But if I build up again the very things that I once tore down, then I demonstrate that I am a transgressor. For through the law I died to the law, so that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if justification comes through the law, then Christ died for nothing. Here ends the reading. the grace that makes us caring all through our lives, urges us to warmth and sharing all through our lives, speaks in us oppression naming, strives in us injustice shaming, lives in us true Grace and peace to you, my brothers and sisters and siblings in Christ. Amen. Have you ever had a disagreement or an argument with someone where the argument begins and you feel like you're arguing about one thing and then it goes on and you begin to realize that, oh no, you're actually arguing about something else. The disagreement is not quite what you thought it was about at first. It was about the thing underneath the thing, right? So I think today, as we hear from Paul, I think that that is a little bit of what's going on in Paul's frustration and in his anger and in his passion about this question about circumcision. And that's not to say that it wasn't a big deal. Of course, this was something really difficult for the Gentiles of the time to wrestle with, this idea, this understanding that it meant that they might have to, to do this very painful thing to be seen as true followers of Jesus. So that, of course, was important, but I think that Paul knows that it's about more than just circumcision. And I think that's important for us to remember because when we are hearing about this fighting, sometimes it can be easy, if we think about it just as circumcision, to, to keep it at a distance, right? Circumcision, that seems like a first century world problem, right? But it's about more than just circumcision. Paul knows this. It's about who is in and who is out. It's about systems and hierarchies and a litmus test for saying who is righteous, who is right with God, who has the power and the privilege and the control, and who doesn't. It's about creating barriers and putting up walls and saying you are part of the in crowd, you are worshiping God the right way, you are a true believer. 
and being able to say, ah, you're not doing it right. You're not a true believer if you don't do this thing. And so Paul knows that this is crucial for the church as it understands itself at its infancy, right? Who are we going to be as followers of Jesus? And so Paul is mad. He's angry and he's brokenhearted because he says, Galatians, what are you doing? What are you doing? This gospel that you are saying that you believe, this is not the gospel of Jesus. This is not the message of Jesus. Paul says, Jesus came to proclaim good news to the poor. He came to proclaim release to the captives, to proclaim healing and liberation, radical inclusivity, and boundless love. Jesus came to tear down walls. He came to break apart systems of oppression. And here you are, finding a new way to put up boundaries, to put up walls, a new way to say who is in and who is out, who is right and who is wrong. And so we know that it's about more than circumcision, and it it matters for us today because there may not be very many churches in the Christian world today that debate whether or not people should get circumcised, but there are many things that the Christian churches do that become litmus tests to be able to see, are you the right kind of Christian? Are you a true believer? And so it matters. This matters. Because Paul says, when you act this way, when you believe this way, you are acting as if Jesus died for nothing. If you believe that justification needs to come through the Torah or needs to be proven by the law and the way you live it, then you are acting as if Jesus died for nothing. You are living this old life. And I want to be clear here. I want to be clear because the church has had a history of anti-Semitism and a history of being unclear of where the church stands with regards to Judaism. So I want to be clear. Paul is not saying that Judaism is the old way, that it's obsolete, Paul is not saying that the Torah no longer matters. Paul quotes the Torah throughout his letters. Paul knows and embraces the beauty and the wisdom of the Torah, but Paul is saying this old understanding, this old way of living, it takes the Torah and it imposes it with a human structure and uses it to say who is in and who is out, who is right and who is wrong. So if you try to be a Gentile believer, but you aren't willing to get circumcised, then you don't have power. You don't have privilege in this new system. You're not really following Jesus. Paul says, that is living the old way. That is living like Jesus died for nothing. That is living with a scarcity mindset. It's a mindset that says that the grace and forgiveness and love of God is limited. But Jesus came and lived and proclaimed, was arrested and executed for the message that God's favor is abundant and is for all. So we no longer have to live with this idea that we need to hoard our power and our privilege, that we need to create these barriers and these systems, and that we need to try and climb a hierarchy where we can be closer to God and safe by that supposed proximity to righteousness. Paul is saying that mindset is the old way of living, and we don't need to do that anymore. That died That died on the cross, that old way of understanding the world, that God's grace was was not boundless. Jesus came to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, that the favor of God is for all, and the kingdom of God is in breaking here and now. So Paul says, we are not justified by the law, by the works of the law, by somehow proving our own righteousness. No, we are justified by faith in Jesus. And I want to take a moment with that phrase, faith in Jesus. In our English Bibles, it will say faith in Jesus, but in Greek, there 
are two ways that we can understand that phrase. It can be faith in Jesus. It can also be translated as faith of Jesus. So faith in Jesus, right, that would be a trust in Jesus or a belief in Jesus. But faith of Jesus, that could mean the faithfulness of Jesus. That is Jesus' faithfulness, both to the message that he came to proclaim because he lived it and he died for it. This message of love, of inclusivity, of breaking down of barriers and the inbreaking of God's kingdom. Faithfulness to that message, but also faithfulness to us because Jesus did not abandon it when it got hard. For our sake, Jesus did not abandon this message. For the sake of the world, Jesus did not abandon this message. He died for this message. So when we understand our justification, our justification is faith in Jesus or faith of Jesus. And we don't need to understand which it is. We don't really know what Paul meant for sure, but we don't need to know. Because what we do know is that God has got us covered. What we know is that God's grace is already abundant and there for us. So we don't need to worry about whether we are believing strong enough, of whether we have enough power or enough privilege to make us righteous. God's righteousness is already extended for us. Jesus is alive inside of us. And we no longer need to live in that mindset of scarcity. Paul wants so much for the church to get this and to understand this because he knows that when we are no longer worrying about, am I good enough? Am I righteous enough? Am I doing it right? And when we are no longer worried about, am I better than them? Am I in the in crowd? then we can focus our energy and our attention where we are called to be. Because we are called to be Jesus in the world. We are called to bring that kingdom of God, that grace and that boundless love and that radical expansion of the kingdom of God, we are called to bring that to the world. And we don't need to worry about whether we are justified, about whether there is enough grace for us. God has got us covered. God has got us covered. So Paul says, don't live as if Jesus died for nothing. Jesus died so that we can be alive in Christ, so that we can bring that message, so that we can be the ones who go to those systems that give us privilege and we can tear them down. Because we don't need to worry if there's enough grace to go around. We can go and tear down the walls that separate us. We can go and break down barriers. We can proclaim justice and mercy and love and grace because we know that the feast is spread and there is a seat for everyone at the table. God's grace is abundant. It is for all. And we don't need to live as if Jesus died for nothing. And I get that it can be hard when we look at the world that we live in today. When we see chaos, when we see injustice, when we see brokenheartedness, it can be hard to see that inbreaking kingdom of God. But we know that Jesus did not die for nothing. And we know that Jesus is alive in us and that we get to participate in God's work in the world, in the inbreaking kingdom of God. When we are no longer bound by worry or fear of scarcity, when we are living in abundance, then we can work to bring God's kingdom to earth today. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Precious
Thank you for joining together in prayer. If you have a prayer request, you can submit it by going to nativitychurch.org and clicking on prayer request. You may also call 612-781-2766 and leave a message. Would you please pray with me? O God of grace, thank you for your unconditional love and forgiveness. Thank you for breaking down barriers. Help us to be graceful and to show your love. Thank you for Reverend Katie Slack and for her message today. Please bless her ministry. O oh, Mothering God, we thank you for the women who have played mothering roles in our lives. Through their love, resilience, and guidance, we have seen and experienced your heart. We ask your blessing upon them that they might be given what they need to continue to be conduits of your grace. We also pray for those who have lost mothers, those whose experience of a mother was less than it should have been, those mothers who have experienced the trauma of losing a child, those women who long to bear children but have experienced the heartache of infertility or other life circumstances that have kept them from motherhood, and all others who experience some pain in the midst of their gratitude on this day. O oh, healing God, we pray for all in need of healing in our local community all those on our prayer list, and all those that we lift up to you in the silence of our hearts now. We pray for all those battling COVID-19, and we celebrate the vaccinations taking place every day. We also give thanks for healthcare workers. Use them as your conduits of healing. Renew our energy and commitment to the pandemic protocols as we move closer to the pandemic's end. 
O God of comfort, we remember those who grieve. Bring your comfort to those grieving the recent deaths of Jim Klingle and Nancy Jensen, and to the family and friends of those who have died during this week and years past, especially those missing Cole Allred, Vicki Scholander, Ray Milniar, Mary Miller, Gloria Hutchinson, Judith Heffron, Harold Root. O God of joy, we also give thanks for your love, which has inspired Kip and Nicole Lamott with 25 years of marriage, Bob and Anna Berg with 10 years of marriage. Finally, O God, thank you for the community of faith we call Nativity. Inspired by your Holy Spirit, help us as we continue to aspire to love courageously and live generously. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you for your generosity. Your giving makes things happen. If you would like to make a gift today, simply go to nativitychurch.org give and you can make a gift via PayPal or your mobile phone via Venmo. Search at Nativity Lutheran in the Venmo app. You can always mail in a check. Our address is 3312 Silver Lake Road, St. Anthony, Minnesota 55418. And if you have offering envelopes, please mail them in. Thank you for your generosity. Let us pray. Generous Creator, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possession, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray now as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine on us and be gracious to us. May God look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. peace, love courageously, live generously. Thanks be to God.
Shalom.